one week to go. We are one week away from Microsoft's E3 presentation, which is just online this year. One week away from seeing Halo Infinite, probably the multiplayer reveal. I did a post saying it's one week to go in the community section a couple of hours ago, and so many people are getting super nervous and excited to see what has changed in an entire year. So I wanted to make this video because I really think that things are gonna turn out really well. If there's anyone who's watching who's a bit worried, the Halo Infinite is one gonna flop or it's gonna do terribly. I really think from the campaign side of things, it's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. If you've grown up with Halo, it's gonna be like reliving your childhood. From everything we've seen, it really looks like they're encapsulating what I love about Halo Combat Evolved's campaign so much. The wide open expanses were kind of lost as each Halo title came out. Halo 2 wasn't as wide and open as Halo 1's was. And then Halo 3 was pretty on the rails, you couldn't really go off the beaten track too much. And the realistic answer, when the graphics actually improved and they pushed one the Xbox to its original limit, the Xbox 360 to its original limit, there wasn't as much opportunity to have these really, really big spaces where you can just explore an entire island. Every mission from every game is still loaded in segments, so when you hit a load zone it'll de-load one part, re-load another. But when I compare, for example, the missions like Halo and Silent Cartographer to Delta Halo, which is a lot more smaller and you just follow basically the pathway until you reach, I guess, that temple area. And that could be because Halo 2 has such a troubled development cycle. But no game since then has really encapsulated or really shown that big wide open expanse that I love from exploring different places. I'm gonna add in as a little side note, I know you can go out of bounds, like I know you can like travel way outside of bounds and there's all this stuff that's all loaded in, you can go driving around that for hours on end. But as an actual design, it wasn't actually meant for you to go there. So I just wanted to add that in there so you don't sharpen your pitchforks at me for me saying that Halo 2 doesn't have any exploration at all. That said, I'm really happy with the direction they're heading in. A big, wide open expanse will add so many different layers of replayability. And for me, going for those campaign clips, it offers so much variety so I can put out some amazing content for you guys. But this presentation is gonna be multiplayer focused. So let's talk about multiplayer a little bit. There's been some discussions from other content creators saying that red versus blue is going to be gone because of weapon coatings taking precedence over the original colors we had in the games. So what I wanna see from you guys in the comments section below, is this a big deal for you guys? Is red versus blue a game breaking deal? Or do you not care so much? I know other games like Destiny 2 don't have a color based system, but Halo's red versus blue has been around for a very, very long time. We've had discussions about weapon coatings on the channel a little bit here. I remember back when Green Skull first made his reaction video and he summed it up really well. He said, okay, so obviously 343 is taking this route with the armor and weapon coatings. If they're not gonna go back on that. So what can we do to make a middle ground so we can have the best of both worlds? Does that mean having a starting set of armor coatings that are the base colors? So then you can have the red versus blue? Or do they wanna take the route of making everything more personable or more personalized? and they do some sort of outlining system. I personally would like to see red versus blue and then free for all, you can have your own Spartan. I'm a classic guy like that, but I understand if you have a different opinion, that's completely up to you. But then it leads into the other question, all right, so Halo Infinite's obviously gonna have cosmetic microtransactions. Do we really wanna have red versus blue when we can do armor coatings that have multiple colors and then make absolute bank off of the community? This is me thinking from a business standpoint. Does it make sense for them to remove the colors to offer more personalization? So 343 can do their best to create a Halo game we love, but often some executives are gonna make big decisions and pass it down to 343 saying, you need to do this. A good example of this is they didn't even want to title Halo, Halo. When they were first coming up with ideas for the series as a whole, they didn't like the name Halo. They didn't think it would sell. How wrong were they? Again, in a week's time, we will see gameplay and we'll see if it's red versus blue. But it raised a really good question, so I'll probably link their videos in the description below. The thing I'm most curious to see about the Halo Infinite multiplayer reveal that we're going to get is how have they changed the Halo 5 gameplay? Is Spartan Charge and Ground Pound gone? In Halo 5, you could jump, thrust, slide, you could traverse the map very, very quickly. While a lot of people enjoyed Halo 5 Guardians and they enjoyed the advanced mobility and being able to soar across the map, I would say an equal amount of people didn't enjoy that. 
which raises another big question, how are they going to appease old and new fans alike? It'll be very interesting to see if they even cater to any fans at all, or if they just focus on new fans, since it is a reboot. There are so many questions. As I'm making this video, I'm coming up with more questions that I want answered. Again, we have no answers yet, but all will be revealed in a week. The last thing I wanted to cover was armor abilities. Now we know the grapple hook and the drop wall are both in the game. I'm curious to see how overshield and camouflage, active camera, can be worked into the game. In every other Halo title, you could just walk over it and it instantly picks it up. With Halo 5, you have to actually manually pick it up. Are they gonna have a balance between old gameplay and new? Are you going to be able to hold many different armor abilities at once? Or are they like a power weapon, you can only have one? I really hope they complement the gameplay well because I really like Halo 3's equipment, I don't mind it at all. So if it's done well, I think Halo Infinite's armor abilities or equipment will work really well. My honest opinion, I feel like Halo Infinite as a whole package of a game will be phenomenal, it'll last for years, and the community will be very, very happy. I feel like the campaign will be stellar, and even if the multiplayer isn't perfect on launch, I think 343 is willing to make changes where needed if there's any sort of backlash. So there you have it guys. I wanted to make this spontaneous commentary today because these things have been on my mind for a little while. Halo Infinite is obviously a very big deal for me. So it's nice to make a video where I can talk to you guys and give you my thoughts. So let me know what you think down below in the comments, especially about the red versus blue, but also expectations you have of Halo Infinite's multiplayer reveal or just the E3 presentation in general. So thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Bye guys.